When God was ready to create a nation of people through whom he would bless all of humanity, he chose a man named Abraham. Probably you already know his story very well, but I, I think that of all the men and women in the Bible to whom we might look to learn about this core value, Abraham might well be our very best choice. It all began when God sought out this man in his home country of Ur and told him that he had been chosen to become the father of many nations. The Lord promised that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars of the sky and that through him every nation on the earth would be blessed. But for many years, that's all that Abraham had, a promise. And at times it must have seemed like an empty promise because he had no children. His wife Sarah was barren. How can you have unnumbered descendants if your wife can't even have a single child? You know the story already, so you know that when Abraham was 100 years old and his wife Sarah was 90, God did a miracle, and the child of promise was born. They named him Isaac, and the sun rose and set on that child like it had on no other child in human memory, because he was the child of promise, and everything that God had said he would do depended on Isaac. God blessed Abraham materially, and he was very wealthy. But Abraham didn't care all that much about the money. What mattered was Isaac. He was the child of the promise. Abraham would certainly have said at that point in his life that God was the owner of everything. And for all that anyone could see, he lived that belief. When he rescued his nephew Lot from the grasp of the armies that had attacked the city of Sodom, he gave a tithe of all the spoils to Melchizedek, the priest of God. And that, by the way, is the first mention of the practice of tithing in the Bible. Even more impressively, when the king of Sodom, trying to express his gratitude, invited Abraham to keep all of the rest of the spoils of the battle for himself, the man of God refused, saying, in effect, if I took these spoils, then you might begin to say, I made Abraham rich. No thanks. I'll be content with what God has given me. That's pretty impressive. But God wasn't satisfied. One day when Isaac was a young man, God spoke again and told Abraham that he wanted him to offer up his son Isaac as a, an offering, a burnt offering to the Lord. It was a horrible request. It didn't make any sense. God's not that kind of God. He would never ask for a man to kill his own child. It was inconceivable, totally inconsistent with everything that Abraham knew about God. Apart from the fact that we can now look back upon God's command and surmise that he was trying to teach Abraham and us something about his own heart and about what he would one day do in sacrificing his own son for us, this command was totally senseless and cruel in the extreme. But Abraham knew what he had heard, and he knew that God is a God who must be obeyed. So he set off with Isaac and traveled to a place the Old Testament calls Mount Moriah. Some Bible students believe that Mount Moriah and Mount Calvary are the same mountain. In any case, they're in the same vicinity. And when Isaac asked his father, where is the lamb for the offering, we're told that Abraham answered, the Lord will provide. And when they came to the place of the sacrifice, the man of God bound his son, laid him on the altar, and reached for the knife with which to slay him. At just that moment, the Lord intervened, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hand on the boy. Or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And as that grateful father lifted up his eyes, he saw a ram caught in a thicket, a ram that God provided for the sacrifice. When Abraham came down from that mountain, he knew what A.W. Tozer called the blessedness of possessing nothing. From that day forward, Abraham knew that everything he had belonged to God, and there would never again be any question about that. Of all the core values that we need to embrace, this one might be the most difficult for those of us who live in the midst of a modern culture that is inflicted with a disease that some people have called affluenza, a painful, contagious, socially transmitted condition of overload, debt, anxiety, and waste resulting from the dogged pursuit of more. In the parable of the talents found in Matthew 25, Jesus uses a compelling story of three entrusted servants to convey the essence of stewardship. It's important for us to realize that we have not fully mastered this truth when we reach the point at which we gladly return to God 
a tithe of all our income. Nor have we arrived when we joyfully give offerings over and above our tithes to promote missions or to meet the needs of others, reserving a portion of what belongs to the master and for his use and keeping everything else for myself is not quite what Jesus was teaching in the parable of the talents. Our money is only a small part of what he has given to us and everything, all of it belongs to him. Abraham is our model. He was a very rich man who understood the blessedness of possessing nothing. 